How do you measure happiness? Because surely it's subjective and not particularly empirical. Uh, yeah, hi, uh, welcome. Yes, it, it can be empirical. So one of the ways in which we've gone about it is to think of all of the different domains of people's lives and to ask for both subjective opinions about your uh, satisfaction with life in terms of your health, your relationships, yes, your financial situation, your job opportunities, your participation in democratic process, um, asking people's uh, satisfaction, ratings of satisfaction of their life across these domains. We can also measure the objective uh, issues that go into it. So, for instance, uh, do you live in a country with a, with a free press, uh, um, freedom of expression? Do you live in a country uh, where you have ready access to health care? Do you live in a country with access to clean drinking water, uh, the natural environment? So we can measure both the objective indicators of well-being, those things that we know improve our well-being, and our subjective opinions across a range of areas. But when it comes to wealth, that's interesting because the uh, settled opinion amongst, I mean, for, for the moment, amongst social scientists who look at these things is, of course, generally having more money is better than less money, but it's more complicated than that. So poverty is really bad. Wealth is not so good. So there's an asymmetric relationship between how much money you've got and satisfaction. Rich people, on the whole, adding more money to their riches doesn't necessarily make them that much more happy. By the time you're well off, other things seem to make more of a difference. Yeah, you remember the study in Finland from a few years ago where they paid a certain number of people, they were all unemployed people, and they got mm -hmm. a regular paycheck. It was a kind of a universal mm -hmm. credit, if you will. Yeah. And the results found that actually those people were overall happier knowing yes. that they had that regular income, although it didn't actually make them impress them or encourage them to get jobs, but they did feel happier. Yeah, and one of the reasons for that is that um, resources, wealth, money, these things are valuable to us in that they can protect us against the bad things that happen to us in our lives. So if you're unfortunate enough to live in a country that doesn't have a healthcare system provided by the state, then you need money for out-of-pocket expenses or for even healthcare itself. And therefore, money is necessary in order to keep you healthy. Money is necessary in order to, to travel, both money individually, to buy train tickets, but also a wealthy country that can afford to invest in the infrastructure of roads and railways and so forth. So even the bare necessities of life require some money. By the time that you end up with about $60,000 a year, it seems that additional money doesn't make that much more difference. Because then things like the quality of your relationship or the quality of your health or the access to the natural world seem, or for instance, participation in the democratic processes of your country seem to have more of a bearing on your well-being than simply doubling your income, for instance. So poor people, money. Rich people, relationships, happiness, satisfaction, meaning and purpose in life. Yeah, and also, we only have about a minute left, Peter. Is it also about once you've reached a certain level of income, it's about the comfort of knowing that if something goes wrong, you have the resources to be able to fix whatever that problem might be, if money is the solution to that problem. Absolutely. So if, if a tire burst on my car, I could buy a new tire for my car. If the boiler for my central heating broke down, I can afford to get my central heating fixed. If I was very poor, those threats are always with me. And yes, to be honest, a little bit of money can make us happier. Lots of money, depends how you use it. Peter, thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate it. Peter Kinderman, Professor of Clinical Psychology at the University of Liverpool.